I made mean, all three of y'all. I can go with you, of course. I just made it. But, uh, Q, yeah, that's my event. And, uh, I mean, dynamic guy. Like, I mean, he was moving and shaking, talking like me. So that's why I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, we can, you know, I know he moving and shaking just like me. So, you know, I mean, he moved talk, he network, he pass our business cards, so it's kind of like we met on that level. And then uh, how I met Jay, actually Rico, Rico Smith of Mad Paper, he was just like, oh yeah, Chris, uh, anytime you really, you know, anytime you want to meet somebody, like figure out what their schedule is and just and show up in their time. That's what he said. And when I saw you going to Atlanta, I was just like, that's my opportunity. So, you know, I got there early. I uh, sat in the front row, you know, and I mean, I was even asking questions, recording that, and then I just kind of knew it from that point, like, uh, you know, yeah, he, 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 he not all talk, he's more so on solutions and action. It was like I was so used to those others. You had, you had solutions, and then you got action. Right, you, 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 you're an action guy, and you come up with a solution for people to catch up with you to get to action. So I love that about you, man. I mean, that's that's like you know a passion that I, I'm really picking up on, and I see you know how you just like stay consistent with it. So, appreciate it. So what was your take when you saw me? Um, I remember when we spoke in Atlanta. I was already familiar from our social media dialogue. And uh, I don't know if it was the website or just the Instagram or whatever, I can't remember that far, but, but I remember the round table meetings, I remember you talking about the mobile apps. No, it was our YMC calls. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was. You were talking about you were helping the YMC calls with the apps. That's when I first interaction with you, you were on the YMC call. He was like, yo, I'll make apps, I'm gonna help get you an app, you know, no charge, you know, none of that. I'm not trying to promote nothing, I'm trying to help with, you know, help service. So you were consistent. That was the biggest thing, it was like, I respect anybody that's consistent. So, you know what I mean? So, a lot of people, over the last you know, several years, a lot of people approach me with the fire in their heart. Yo, Jay, I want to be an intern. Or, Jay, I want to shout you. Jay, I want to up where I want to do. I want to do it, do. And I would say 90% of those people will phase out, like, first week or two. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When given the opportunity. And so, I don't give opportunities that easy because at the, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, the door is still open. I don't necessarily shut doors, but I like to see who's consistent, who got work ethic, who got who's serious, who's committed. But those are the things I look for anyway. So you just are like, oh, I could do this kind of person. You'll never follow up. Like, I ain't gonna last in my organization anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, obviously, got hustle, you got consistency. It don't mean you gotta be annoyingly consistent, but yeah. <laughs> just consistent. You know what I mean? So when I saw you from Atlanta. The fact that we've already you already been on calls, we already had some kind of dialogue. And then you took the initiative, not being from Atlanta, but from Tennessee to Atlanta, that was like, yeah, I respect that. So that really, you know what I'm saying, really opened the door for you to be further and further in the organization. So like when we because YFC was generally just Baltimore, Maryland people, but I opened the door to you, Steve Bender from Arkansas, and uh, um, one of our White your, uh, European American wives members, Layel from Tennessee, from uh, Nashville, um, because of the consistency of all those people, even Bender, he was on every call, every call, he was in my inbox mad times, just volunteering. And, you know what I mean? It was just like, I respect it. Because that's what I would do. If I really wanted something, like, that's what I would do. So, withdrawals were here. That's what's up. You know, I really respected the round table thing you did. It was really innovative and it was, again, taking leadership, taking charge. And, you know what I'm saying? It was Because I didn't record that part when you were saying something about the leader. Uh, the whole leader role. Like It's like you want to be a leader, but then you want to be humble enough to just say, you know, hey, take the ring. Right. If that's your field, if that's your passion. Explain a little bit more. Well, it's just that you like different kind of leaders, right? And you got those who relish in leadership for the sake of leadership and the cool title and all the perks of being a leader, right? So if you're the person in front of the room or the influencer or the leader, you do get admiration and adoration and the trust of people and those kind of things. But that should never be your, your motive or what keeps you in that capacity. But so many, I think, I would say 70 to 90% of leaders they relish and bask in the 
admiration of people, as opposed to leading from the perspective of being a servant. Right? Every leader should be willing to wash the feet of their followers. Mm. Every leader. He's greatest, arguably the greatest leader, greatest man to walk the planet Earth was Jesus. No matter how you feel about him as Christ, but as a prophet, as a man of whoever, as a whatever you want to say he was, but the story of him was how he influenced so many, but yet he was still humble enough to wash the feet of his disciples. Mm -hmm. So I take leadership from that perspective. The fact that when you see these churches and you see these other leaders who are always kind of abusing their power, abusing their leadership, you know what I'm saying, whether it be women in their congregation, all right, all the women, you know, just all of that kind of stuff, taking, you know, the money from the church, now you got yes. private jets and planes and crazy cars, you got poor followers. Mm -hmm. That's like, now if you, as a pastor or as a leader, have major money from your outside for-profit businesses, that's one thing. But for you to use the money that are donations of people towards the ministry to enhance your lifestyle to an extravagant limit, that's like that's foolish, right? So, again, I just look at leadership. Um, just being careful with it. It's, 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 it's a it's two-edged sword. It could be dangerous. You know what I'm saying? It could be great when done with and done by an authentic person. And it could be really, look at Hitler and so many others, it could be really devastating and dangerous if your leader, those who are following, you know. The thing about being leaders is that you could smile and have the charm and glow in your eyes and charismatic and engage people. That, that quality comes with a lot of people, but it's, the, it's what you can't see as in their heart yeah. that really separates that unique 10% of leaders and that you know, authentic 10% and then those who are just, you know, Getting the perks from leadership. Just mm -hmm. so.